I've been driving that open car for four hours at the stop three times so the damn thing went over to get on me. Got a Coca-Cola? A cold one? It's behind the counter, take it or leave it. Do you work here? As little as possible. <laughs> 1935, you 
still have a refrigerator? Can you tell me about some of the folks around here? Nope. Why not? A place like this, the heart of America. People have to be awful nice. Nope. <laughs> God, I've never seen such a mean bunch. Awful. Did terrible things. I hate to tell you. Don't then. Tell me about the good people, the hardworking people. Must be some you can think of. I knew some, sure. Hearts of gold, kind, best you could hope for. What in your mind differentiates the mean, awful people from the kind ones? They're the same ones. <laughs> I don't think I understand you. I don't think you do. <laughs> you know, this. I tell you something about poor people, son. Poor people don't go jumping out of windows the first time somebody tells them they're out of money. Even if they did, it wouldn't hurt them none because they build their homes close to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Only problem was around here, the ground wouldn't stay on the ground, and then the bankers come out to repossess what was left. Well, maybe we can help. I'm from the Works Progress Administration. The what? <clears throat> the uh, Works Progress Administration. I have to make a field report and press land. Progress. Yes, sir, we intend to put men back to work. Well, what could you do around here that would be progress? Isn't work itself progress? I've been working all my life. Doesn't look like any progress took place in me. <laughs> well. Go on, talk. Talking about work is something the government's good at. We, we intend to do a lot of things that have been done before. <laughs> I hear you got men digging ditches just so other men can come along and fill them up. I don't think that's ever been done before. Don't the people need money? Uh, they ain't much worrying about money around here anymore. Why? I'm not the worrying kind. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I still don't understand. I don't think you do, here. I right, see. This place used to be full of people. All kinds of people. Ever forgettable pack you can imagine. Cotton farmers, mostly. And there ain't nothing in the world more ridiculous than watching a Texas cotton farmer stump grubbing, brush popping, and sod busting his way through life just to grow cotton. Like, you dig back in 1929. Start in on the <laughs> <laughs> Or the track you got here. 
Oh, first things first. What do you got in the box, Warren? A surprise. Well, we're already surprised. You don't have to do any more. Okay, Warren, what is it? Well, come on, guess. <laughs> Hello, Clyde. Clara, come on, guess. How am I supposed to know you're liable to bring about anything home? Well, like, I ain't careful. It's a radio. Yeah. <laughs> now we know, don't we? Let's see. Clyde was driving that tractor on Main Street before the end. About ready to start plowing up pavement when I saw it there in Linda. It spoke to me right out of the glass. How much did you pay for it? Well, don't have to pay for it all at once. You mean you bought it on credit? Multiple, it's kind. It's got four bands. Don't like bands. How about church service? Sure, in a minute. You can even get Europe. What do you want to get Europe for? You can't understand a thing they say. Uh, listen, well, I should get home. We'll start talking, okay? Yeah. All right. How are we going to play this thing? We don't have electricity. Well, the wires soon. Well, why, before you know it, there'll be so many wires running back and forth across the country, you'll think we're living under a net. Well, <laughs> so we're going to pay for this with the money we're not spending for electricity because we don't have any. <laughs> wires, wires, wires. I never saw so many wires. Why do they call them things a wire lamp? Just what are we going to do with this radio now that we've got it? Yes, it's a right nice thing to celebrate with. Celebrate what? The tractor. Did you buy that tractor too? Yep. Yeah, I'm really sure we're going to worry about it. We don't have enough land. You need a tractor. We do now. What do you mean? I just bought Henry's quarter section. He wants to retire. Sold it at a good price too. Oh, how? I put our land up at the bank. Oh, Orrin, how could you? You've done it now. Orrin, your pa has worked his whole life long to get this land free and clear so that you would never have to find out what it felt like to owe your whole life to somebody else. The small farmers being left behind? We have got to increase our income. How could you do this without telling us? A farmer ought to be able to live like other people in this country. I'm a first-rate farmer. By God, we're going to a first-rate farm here. Paul's land's a good start. But now that we're married, i got to make my own mark. I gotta put a lot. Don't go saying you're doing this for us. If you want me to be a part of it, then you bring me in on the decision making. Hey, don't be like that. I did this to make everyone happy. I wanna start seeing some smiles around here. <laughs> I wanna see so much grinning and laughing, you'll be worried about breaking your face and too much happiness. I'm fixing. I'll put in the biggest crop the dumbass dirt farmer ever put in around here. It <laughs> sounds to me like you're just gonna be working this out to death. The hell no. I live myself to death. I mean, a man comes into this world screaming and naked, and they gotta get all quiet and dressed up when he dies. I mean, a man's gotta go on shouting and stomping so he leaves some footsteps and that goes around. Well, I don't want no words on my gravestone. I just want to carve myself into every rock and tree until I get the smell of flowers and the taste of apples. Always thinking big, aren't you, Oren? Right? What's well, gonna happen? I feel it. And I'm going to plant Clyde's land, too. Oh, and he's going to help us. Oh, what'd you have to do with all this? Put up some land, Clyde. Hell, yeah, all my land's already up in the paint. Watch your land, uh, You know, all I know is you can help now. What? You're taking that thing back, and you're taking this land out of it. Hey, now, you just slow down here a minute, will you? Gee, I've been sitting there listening to all this confusion. This ain't no craft of doom. Now, Orrin, maybe he's done a good thing by going out and buying that land. Prices are cheap. Things are looking good. A man's got to try a few things on his own. You've got to give him some room to breathe. What? What happened to Where's your mustache? What you what? your mustache? What? I'm making Who did this? Who did this? Who? Hey, you over there. Conflict the stars. Are you taking up a bar one of these days? Ah. Oh, so it's just, I want to get you to go to meetings on Sunday. It's, it's embarrassing to take you with all my 
You and all your friends. How will we fall, man? Sounds like where you're going is going to be lonesome. If you would just stay away from that honky tonk and them no good, maybe you wouldn't be getting us in debt just so you could be an important person around all this. Then what? Drinkers! Oh, Christ drank wine. Drink is biblical. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Proverbs 31 6. <laughs> Let him drink that he can forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Proverbs 31 7. <laughs>
bites me. And I think my wife is cheating on me. I married an ugly woman just to be sure. <laughs> but there ain't nothing in this world you can depend upon. That's two drinks show before. What? Oh, how you trick me into drinking this stuff? <laughs> Instead of no bourbon water. We just finished laying in, and now I want to hear my radio. <laughs> Bet we got 30 tons this year. Well, the boys got 20, I got 15. Yeah, I got three. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Here's to 19 goddamn 29. Hmm? Hey, you want to play some poker days? Ah, man, I always lose. All oh, that or just nice. It's your turn to win. Oh, you so sure I'm going to win? How come you want me to play? Doesn't seem to work. How much you pay for that thing, Lauren? Yeah, what's the matter, Lauren? You gotta find the station first. Sure has a pretty light. Well, then we don't have to listen to it. We can just look at it. These things gotta warm up. Here. <laughs> just trying to help. <laughs> Here's to the outboard kits, the finest goddamn radio in the world. It was the day it's being called Black Tuesday on Wall Street. There have been numerous... Let's find some music! We want to listen to that! Now, no, wait a second. That sounded pretty bad. Uh, let's listen to some more of that. Hey, Mays, how's that wife of yours, huh? What you know about my wife? Nothing. Just trying to figure out who's being fooling around with her, that's all. Mays, first time I saw your wife, I thought, that is the ugliest man I ever seen! <laughs> yeah. It's all right for me to say she's ugly, but it ain't right for you to do it. Oh, come on, Mays. I don't mean nothing. Here, get it out. Let me buy you a drink. Ah, uh, Peter says drinking is sin. I better just stick with water. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? Mays, don't you know water's to wash your feet in? Look, look Mays, I know some people around here have been trying to convince you that the devil's in whiskey, but they got a bass acids. I mean, I ask you, what keeps a man's spirit down when he wants to? Get out and make some noise. Whiskey? Hell no, it's water! That's water drowns a man's soul! Wait, Nate, the devil's in water! Uh. When Marty drank, he only drank what he thought he ordered. And that is how he came to drink the demon that's in water. Down and down in one it raised his heart and got about and whipped him till he bent. How did he do it? Went screaming from inside his soul. Drink whiskey, oh whiskey, gonna save your soul. He only ate what he bleed and slept from on his side. And when he went against his will, it shoot on him inside. So then he found the only way he ever could feel free. Was when he got that demon drunk by drinking good whiskey. A demon screaming from the side of soul. Drink whiskey, oh whiskey, oh to save your soul. But whiskey is the expensive friends, and finally he was broke. And when he couldn't buy no more, he had a sober stroke. A demon screaming from the side of soul. Drink whiskey, oh whiskey, oh to save your soul. A demon screaming from inside his soul. Drink whiskey, oh whiskey, for the sake of soul.
stock team worth a thing. Oh, the whole country's gone bankrupt. This one's gonna hit us all. Oh my God, this is a national obituary. It's the worst news I ever heard. Oh my God, I think we're all gonna die. Oh, Nays, you're a pessimist. Well, if it ain't so bad, how come all them bankers is gonna take the leap? Amid numerous reports of stockbrokers and bankers jumping from the windows of their office, during the first three hours of trading, stock valuation shrank more than eleven billion dollars, far exceeding anything ever known. By day then, more than thirty million shares of U.S. industry and commerce were dumped as if they were just so much junk, necessity perhaps, but not reason rule. Now, as the shades of evening are falling, the question is, how will this nightmare, to many tragically cruel, ever end? That's the way it is, October 29th, 1929. Jesus Christ. There's a chance that the mills might close for a few months. I don't have to tell you what that'll do to the price of cotton. I don't think it'll last too long. This is a crisis of confidence. If the price slips, we'll just have to hold on to it until the price goes back up. Oh, that's right. But what do we do with it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, if you farmers want to store your crop in my big storage farm, I won't charge you too much, and, and we'll all come out better in the end. Since when you know so much about things, I never see you read the paper. 
You don't see the sun move, neither, but it gets dark every night, don't it? <laughs> then you do eat paint. Of course not. I've known some of the world's best liars, watch and I read about second-rate ones in the paper. <laughs> now, how's a man to ever know what to believe? Well, you know, it seems to me if you know they're always lying, and you just got to believe the opposite. <laughs> well, that's crazy. <laughs> nah, See, you got to learn to understand the subtlety of the system. See, in the city there, they got a man called Dog Catcher. He's paid by the city to catch dogs. What's the city want with dogs? City don't want dogs. That's why they got him. Well, what does he want with dogs? He don't want them either. Well, who wants them then? Well, the people they take them from, but they can't have them once they got them took. That's the subtlety of the system. Well, what's that got to do with the price of cotton? Well, it seems like sometimes they got more dogs loose than other times. For a man can't hold on to his mustache, you sure got a lot to say. <laughs> Don't give me none of that lip. Hey, watch it now. You got enough of your own show. Oh, <laughs> Hi, fellas. Say, boy, mustache coming along real nice. <laughs> <laughs> My credit's still good? Cotton farmer discussing his credits about like Politician discussing his friends. Can do it. <laughs> Wish I could afford to be poor. Hey, say, uh, you fellas all going to the dance tonight? Nah. Did, did I tell you my walk right off? I don't know who with. I ain't found nobody else missing from town yet. Well, maybe she ran off alone. Yo, why would you go and do a thing like that? Well, anyway, I was thinking maybe I'd go up to that old movie picture show they just opened up in town. It ain't no fun to go to a dance without a woman. Say, what about Sis? Now, she ain't got no man. She's put one off last year. Oh, 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 I got to have to be pretty hard up to go after her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, Miss Paul. <laughs> well, you ain't telling me nothing, I'm sure. Who's <laughs> that, uh... Eli's truck you're driving out there? Uh, say, I think all you guys should be at the dance tonight. <laughs> well, maybe I'll go. Depends on how bad I feel. You know, I haven't even had a chance to read them old bitch words yet today. <laughs> You 
did it. Hell no! Oh, I know you, Clyde. I know when you're up to something. Or I didn't do it. That was an accident. I don't believe you, Clyde. Let it be, or let it be. We're all better off like this. April. The best, worst, funniest, saddest, stupidest thing in the world is watching a cotton farmer go about life as if it could be done. You know, time was when these planes out there were hovered by tall, tough grass. And time was when the buffalo ate that grass. Time was when the Indian ate them buffalo. Then the farmers came and they <laughs> cut the planes up and plowed the grass down. And the last time I saw a buffalo or an Indian was on a nickel. Now they're getting scarce too. Young was tiny when we picked berries bright red. And my daddy drank rye made at home. And my mama made jam and she baked us. He's a, a 
the south end of the northbound mule. You okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <my> Jesus. <laughs> Too young? Ain't that the whole point of the Army? I mean, if they let everybody out of the Army that's too young, who'd be left to fight? Generals, colonels, <laughs> hell, they're too old. Now, that'd be a goddamn interesting war. <laughs> old men like drunk lovers wanting it, but unable. If you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you are something. More than I can say for you. What you reading? Nothing. You got a paper in your lap. I'm just prospecting for a place to wrap my garbage. <laughs> well, I saw you reading. What was it? Mm. Well, there's a quote here from Myron C. Taylor. President of the United States Steel. What does he say? He says, We shall have learned something of great importance out of this depression. It is just too soon to say just what we are learning. <laughs> Goddamn profound. 
<laughs> we need someone to get a handle on the problems in this country. Somebody that cares about people. <laughs> I don't like people. A man should speak his mind. I reckon you won't have much to say. <laughs> you are mean. <laughs> I'm the meanest man God ever wanted to get in. Sure, people have faults, me included, but they got goodness too. What they need is to find a way to control the events in their lives. Say, uh, you playing with the boat? Nope. Mind if I ask why? Mine has never stopped you yet. <laughs> why? Because somebody I voted for might get elected. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. <laughs> uh, I don't understand. I'll put it to you simple. People ain't no good, and politicians are the cream of the crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot in what you say there. We need new people in Washington, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, uh, the reason I stopped by was to tell you I'm planning on running for judge. Uh, now that Judge Bradley's retiring, I want to change things and help the folks around here. <coughs> like you done with that barn fire? <laughs> I didn't know they wouldn't get paid. Uh, right. The insurance company had a sneaky clause in that contract. I was deceived as much as everyone. Maybe so. But you didn't lose as much as everyone. I didn't profit on that affair. Maybe so. And I gave those farmers part of what I was paid for the crop and the barn without even being asked. Maybe so, but then not enough to do any good, just enough to make sure no one wanted an investigation into that fire. Now, you know that fire was an accident. Maybe so. Do you, uh, do you hear about Orrin? Hey, come out and repossess that new tractor in here. Now he's out trying to plow all that new land he got with a goddamn mule. <laughs> Mule's going lame. I don't know what it's doing to Orrin. That's awful. I'm sorry. Do you hear about me? No. Banker and the sheriff come out to his place to foreclose. They told Nays not to feel bad or nothing. They just wanted to inform him he don't own it no more. Oh, that's all. Yeah, they said he could stay on and rent, but you know, Nays got kind of upset and he tried to sick his blind dog on him. The dog got it wrong and bit him instead. <laughs> and then he kind of took a swing at them. And that sheriff hit him on the head with a rifle butt. Now, Nays ain't got no place to live. That's why we need someone in office to take a close look at these laws. <laughs> laws. You know, uh, the laws in this country make it just as illegal for a rich man to steal bread as it does for a poor man. Laws aren't perfect, but they can be changed. You know, letting you be judge would be sort of like letting a fox be in charge of the hen house, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, sometimes you go too far with your humor. A person could take offense. <laughs> A person could. <laughs> you <know. laughs> you must just take yourself on out of here. Hello, Orrin. Mm. I, I came to show you this here radio of mine. Orrin, I don't need no radio no more than you never needed it. Well, it's a real good radio. It cost $88. They were two cents to me. You know, at least I can wrap my garbage in the newspaper. This is a store? You could sell it to someone. Or and everybody else around here is just as broke as you are. Why don't you take it back to the place where you bought it? I tried. Oh. Well, I, I can't pay you no $88 for it. Uh, what would you say to 45 Sure. I mean, that, that'd be real fine. Take it out of the register. But don't you be coming around here with any more junk to sell me. My life's full up with it. I sure am old to you. <laughs> you know, people ain't no good. Just real mean. Rob, steal, kill everything. The lying, cheat, and work too hard, so when it gets you good, you're just too tired. Now, in this land of iteration dream, 
common ingredient is grams and greed. Steak when they're hungry, liquor when they're dry, money when they're poor, religion when they die. Now, Rager's in the bank just to lend out the money, and the preacher's in the pulpit just to take it in the money, tell the poor gun farmer ain't left with a nickel. Let's lose that money in a painful circle. By chance, and then he succeeds, he just becomes the property of all of his deeds. Success makes a slave of a hard working man. Once he's owner, he's owned by the land. You know? That conference is the winning world. That's why the dollar bill is curl. You gotta be a curler, and you gotta get twisted. You gotta get smart.
creation either. Uh -huh. It was like the earth was fighting back against the cotton. The cotton is a cash crop, but it takes the heart out of the land faster than it. And what happens to the land happens to the people. Thank you. 
They convinced themselves they were there to uh, right some vain wrong. Some wrong somehow bound up in the fact that the government opened its doors to treasuries and banks and the like and closed it to needy individuals. They set up their camp across the Potomac and the Anacostia Flats, just as they'd done in France. And they sang, my bonus lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my bonus to me. <laughs> President Hoover asserted the bonus army was full of reds and criminals, nothing more than a mob animated by the spirit of revolution. The Senate voted down the bill by Texas Patman and the army was sent in. Army Chief of Staff Douglas MacArthur ordered Majors Patton and Eisenhower to clear them out. When Patton's cavalry charged the crowd, spectators shouted back, shame, shame. Among the veterans routed was Joseph Angelino, who had won the Distinguished Service Cross for saving Major Patton's life during the war. The day's toll, two dead, 55 injured, and 135 arrested, including Charles Ruby, the war hero that had been invited to the White House last New Year's Day. last night about what happened up in Washington. I don't have to spend money to hear about something I already know was going to happen. How could the government send the army in against their own kind? It don't make sense. They weren't against the government. You hear anything from Warren? No. Uh, I imagine he'll be home soon. You seen Nace lately? Nothing makes sense anymore. I don't understand. There are so many folks leaving this place. The bombs are empty out there. I wonder where they're all going. I won't miss them. Why well, will? It won't be the same around here. Speak of the devil. No man in the United States has had the trouble I've had since 1931. I must be the unluckiest man alive. What is that on your nose, Nace? Oh, it's that acid factory. Now, I went over to Floyd Data, started working there. The first day, they spilled acid on my nose and near burnt it half off. But then they fired me, saying I ain't cut out for no acid factory. No man in the United States has had the trouble I've had since 1931. No man! Maybe you could get a job over to the post office. Yeah, bullshit. Oh. Your uh, dog trying to bite your leg clean off this time, Nate. Then I got a job on an oil rig, and that did my job too good. We was pumping so much oil, the rig got all slippery, and I fell and broke my leg, and they acted like it was my fault. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. This country is going to hell. Well, maybe get a new president, I'd say. You know, well, maybe you ought to vote for this one. Ro Ro Roosevelt, fella. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, uh, chicken in every pot. Who's got a pot these days? Did he say that? I thought it's that fella over to Louisiana and, you know, every man a king. They all say it. They figure out what to say by what people ain't got. That's why there's so much talking these days. Well, that always says a new deal. New deal. <clears throat> Sounds like gambling. Well, no, he says he's going to end prohibition so we can all drink again. <laughs> yep, but oh no. The thing is, every time we get a Democrat president, it seems like we've got to have a war. People get killed. Yep. Yeah, a war kills soldiers. These Republicans are going to kill us all pretty soon. <laughs> what about Lincoln? He was a Republican. He started a war. Oh, Civil War ain't the same thing. It, it, it don't do them good. A foreign war does it. It ain't American. You know, there's a lot of injustice in this world. Seems to me we ought to be out there fighting some of it. Make the world a better place and raise the price of cotton, too. Yeah, a good war would be the American thing to do. America needs a good war to set this world right. So let's boost the economy. Let's all go out and fight. Of course, I'm too old to give my life. They can send a younger man. Well, I stay home and earn some dough and they learn discipline. And that shit will fair and warfare, all fair and love and war. We got to stop the justice trends. That's what young men are for. Of course, I'm too old to give my life. They can send a younger man. Well, I stay home and earn some dough and they learn well, we can take our Chevrolets and turn them into tanks. And then we'll take some farmers and turn them into yanks. It'll make the world a 
no white. Where'd your family come from? I don't know for sure, but they was all white. Mm. So you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what kind of blood you got, but you know what kind you don't want. You don't know nothing about America, but you want it to get bigger. <laughs> I guess you're a chicken white American, all right. Uh, hi, fellas. Good to be home. Right. Heard about your bonus army being run out of Washington there. Yeah, it was kind of bad. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. How come they were so rough on you, boy? They said we was communists. What's that? That's someone who advocates the taking away of private property. You mean like bankers? Say, <laughs> where's the orange? I don't know. Paul, they started swinging clubs and shooting off tear gas. I didn't see no point in sticking around to cry. I headed home. You just ran off and left them? Paul, you had to be there to understand. We thought everything was going so well, then it happened all of a sudden. The congressman who was leading the fight for the bonus had a heart attack while giving a speech in favor of the bonus. It seemed like all hope went with him. Then Oren jumps up on the steps of the Capitol. Starts telling all the veterans how much hope there still was and, and how much we still had to believe in. Then he gets everybody in singing America the Beautiful. Wait, 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 wait a minute, they attacked you for singing? I just can't understand how you could run off like that without seeing what happened to Orin. Paul, he was around. Everybody ran off. Orin probably ran off too. He's probably right behind me. I'm sure he's home when he's hanging out. I better be getting home. Uh, my credit's still good. You know, I just can't understand what the army attacking its own kind just don't make sense. Well, say, Paul, uh, when's your bank payment due? Well, I've been thinking about getting some work myself. You know, this sitting around here is not good for a man. It's bad for a man. It makes his mind wander too much. Just sitting around, waiting for the draft to dry him up. You just look at that. I, I marked what I took and I signed for. <laughs> safety, 
Job 5, 4. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from this evil man. Psalms. My beloved has put his hand by a hole in my door, and my bowels were known for hell. That's the except on the sound in 5, 3. <laughs> Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Proverbs 9, 6, 3. Oh, I made you something special. <coughs> Use the last of the molasses. Any eggs? No, the hens aren't laying anymore. Oh, thank you for the supplies, mm -hmm. Mama. There's something wrong, Pa. No. no. Who said you were? No one. I'm going to you. Oh. I'll tell you about that fellow who uh, taught his horse to live without eating. Yep, yep, trained him to it. That's right. See, what he'd do is every time he went out to feed that horse, he'd just put a little less in that feed bag till he got that horse trained down to nothing. That's right. Trained him to it. That's right. Too bad, though. Two weeks later, after he got it trained, the horse up and died. <laughs> Today at the store, boy, I don't know. He's got the luck of a balloon that's been mistaken for a pincushion. <laughs> oh, what's the matter with him? He's going about things like a one-legged man in an asking contest. Chloe. <laughs> oh, you think Orange's going to get back in time for the picket? Uh, I gave up my profits license when I became a cotton farmer. Well, we had, we had a good crop planted this year, don't we? Well, it's, uh, it needs uh, work and rain. Sometimes, uh, when a man, when we expect too much of a man, or he thinks we do, uh, and can't live up to it, then it, it, it hurts his pride an awful lot. And things start to break inside of him. And, um, and Oren's never been whipped by anything in his whole life. So it's, it's going to take a little while for him to get used to it. But he will. He will get used to it. He'll come around, and then when he does it, You'll come back here and then everything's going to be all right. He could have written one sentence to tell us how he is. Well, that's the one thing he couldn't write. Chicago. But that's so far away. No, well, hey, I want to keep this between the two of us, all right? Why'd you tell me? Because you're strong, Cloud. We're going to need your strength. I'm not that Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I love you, Papa. Now I'm, I'm tired. It's going to be a long day, Mom. Papa began to work the fields again like he'd done in his younger days. Oh. 
understand. I'm with Chicago to try and earn the money to pay the oh, bank and, and come back here. And oh, and I'm trying you, to tell you something. To Listen, to listen for once in your life, I'm trying to tell you. someone really mad, he just threatened to vote for Hoover. They called jackrabbits Hoover hogs and slums Hoover bills and Hoover a jackass. <laughs> that kind of brings us to the Labor Day picnic. <laughs> Yeah. 
she ain't gonna kick it none. No, the women's just too much damn trouble. Hey, Ace, maybe you didn't put it to her right. Why don't you try it one more time? I'm leaving. I've had enough of this place. I don't want no more of it. No, there can't be no place worse than this. Oh, Nace, we didn't mean nothing by it. Well, we'll find something else for you. Would you like to dance? Sit down a minute. There's something I want to tell you. You can tell me standing. I'm going to have a baby. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, you know, are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> hey, everybody, come on out. I'm going to dance with the baby. <laughs> my wife, my darling Clara, is going to have I mean, we're going to have it. Because she's going to have it. A baby! Oh! <laughs> What's so remarkable about that? <laughs> Wait till you see him, friend. Here's to the future president of the United States. <laughs> can, can you dance? Of course I can dance. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Clyde, don't you congratulate me? Sure. Oh, no, I'll be happy for you. What's wrong, man? I just gotta know this. The cold's at my farm. Friends, and you are my friends. We have hard times on us, and it seems to me that a lot of you just can't get a break. So I decided to team up with FDR and New Deal. Seems to me that we've got a country controlled by big business. And they don't care about the little man all the fault. But I do. Now what we need is some local control. That's why I've decided to run for county judge. Yeah, well, what can you do for it? I can give you a fair break. Why let the businessman up in Floyd Data run this county? Now I'm a farmer and I've been to law school. Put me in the county seat and you'll have someone that understands your problem. You owe us, Eli. Yeah. Elect me, and you won't be disappointed. So what's man to do when they're going to take us home? The house he was born in. The land he worked so hard it almost killed him while he tried to cut it to death with a plow. I think them bankers are doing them a favor to run them off that land, but somehow they didn't want to go. Mm. You know, once someone's grown something on a piece of land and buried their kin in it, raised their kids on it, Breathed it till it came out their pores with their sweat. Well, if somebody tells them they gotta leave, they wanna just keep working it till it grinds them down, even if they're gonna become part of it. Yeah, it just don't sit well. Now, that election year, Eli got elected. But as the new judge, he kept on signing foreclosure actions, just, just like the judge before him had. People around here felt he kind of like broken a promise. There were lots of foreclosures that season. And so the people decided they'd show up at his courthouse. Clyde didn't go, though. He'd already lost his place. Take off your hats and stop smoking cigarettes. This is my court. We don't care. Now whose court it is? We want to talk to you about these foreclosure actions. We want you to wait for Roosevelt's new law and not sign any more foreclosures. The judge in other counties are refusing to sign more foreclosures. My hands are tied by the law. Legal stealing is what it is. Well, you shouldn't get yourself in debt. But you can't help it sometimes. They want to take my place for that. I can't pay my taxes. There's nothing I can do. No, you promised us that's all we elected you. I also swore to uphold the law. There's something wrong with the law. If you can do this to us, yeah. people losing their homes, people starving, going through trash cans. Yeah. You should see what's going on in the cities. This country's changing, and nobody's doing anything to stop it. Right. Yeah. The law fails to set 
satisfy the needs of the people, it is still the law of diligent change. Says, and you better hang me. <laughs> I saw him 
guys today, drunk as ever, he probably should be home. No, oh, I guess he'd been thinking about doing it for so long, and I thought we had. Speaking of no accounts, anyone seen Nace lately? Nope. He up and left town. Oh. He really did it like he said he would. Come on out, my boy. I'm sitting. If you want to come in, you're welcome. How'd you get to be a deputy sheriff? When I moved into town, didn't have nothing. They offered me a job. There wasn't nothing else. Lord, I hate doing this. Doing what? They sent me to arrest you. <laughs> For what? For leaving that mob against the judge. <laughs> I ain't joking, old man. <laughs> Hell, I led that mob away from him, not to him. The judge is real mad, Orin, but it'll cool off in a day or two. The judge? What's the matter, Clyde? You afraid to say Eli? <laughs> look, Thorin, Sheriff just got to make it look like we're doing something. It's just a formality. You'll be cleared. Am I the only one taken in? Well, looking to round up some others, but you're the only one the judge recognized. But it won't come to nothing. Just to make it look like we're doing something. Clyde, how can you be doing this after what they did to you? I don't understand what's happening these days. Nobody does. I'm just trying to stay alive and feed my family. But I, I couldn't do it if I thought it would hurt Orin. Look, all right, it's just formality. The sheriff's waiting in the truck outside, waiting for me to bring you out. They wanted me to come because they figured I could reason with you, you being a hothead and all. Look, all right, if you come out with me real peaceful like, it'll look good for me and they'll see they must have got you wrong too. Please don't start no trouble for me, Orin. I got my family to think of. I need this job. You're not gonna do this, good. You're not. Your heart is friend. It's supposed to be a place. Give one to Caesar, one to Caesar. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Clyde's right. When they hear what happened, they'll, they'll let me go. Well, let's go. Get over with it. You got to man that oh. man. Yes, sir. Come on, I ain't supposed to be talking to you like this.
We met over the church to see what we could do. <coughs> Hopefully that does not last night so We tried to seal up the house with donkey and those strips, and, and then we stuck sheets and towels and put around the doors and windows, but still it leaked in and laid in ripples on the floor. I heard our dust was coming down over Chicago and New York. Some said it's even settled on the president's desk. Well, when the storm got down in the middle of the night, we all lied awake wondering what would happen. When the sun came up that morning, fences, bombs, machinery, all gone, only tops of the shed stuck out.
thought it's a story like this in. Uh, oh, I know what happened all right. But I can't say I ever understood people. The people couldn't understand how the government and the banks and the weather could get together to drive them off that land. But they were run off one by one. Even Eli left. Uh, the state attorney general got the back of all those big cattlemen he wanted. Now he's talking about running for the Senate. An orange? Charlie, when I was at that labor camp in Marysville, 
but I couldn't hardly but recognize him the way he shrunk down his skin and bones. Now, I asked him where the others were. He said four of his kids and his wife, they starved to death. Don't go out there, Warren. They don't want you out it's there. It's not right what's happened to people in this country. It's not right. They don't want us there. They don't want us here. There's got to be some place for us in this life. Yay. We don't have very much. We don't know exactly where we're going, but people got to stick together. You, you can come with us if you like. I don't know why. Let's see your notice. Claude. Claude. Oh, no. Warren, I, I'd like to try and explain this to you if I can. I know how hard this must be for you and your family. I, I, I wish there were something. It's I... not right. We don't owe you one tenth of what this farm is worth. It's the law, ma'am. But why don't you just take back the new land? Why do you have to take back the old land, too? What have you done to earn it? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I wish I could answer your question. Farms aren't worth much anymore. And if I don't do this, then the bank will just hire somebody else and then lose my home, too. Uh, no, you buy these free sentences here by okay, the but that's all right, Deputy. You don't have to read it all. Unfortunately, I think we all know what it's Why don't we just stay on and share crop like them other farmers you foreclosed on? Don't you ask me for anybody? Well, I, I can't let you do that anymore. Why not? Because we're not doing that anymore. You know, Mr. Roosevelt is now paying farmers not to grow so the bank can receive for money for not putting in a crop. So you can't share crop if there's no until we find something. Well, I'm sorry, but we've got to remove the house in order to get paid for the land it's sitting on. But I believe if you, if you go into town, you can get on relief. I don't want to get on relief. I know more. It's my land. It's my house. I helped my pa build it. When I was a kid, we bought it with our sweat and love. It's ours. Don't get worked up, or it's happened to us all. You shut up. I know how you feel. What the hell are you two? You never worked the land. You don't know what it's like. My paw's buried here. This land isn't worth anything anymore. Then why do you want it? Well, we don't, actually. We'd rather you stay on it and, and pay for it. Oh, the system gets all, all loose on us sometimes, and we can't control it. If you don't want the land, then, then let us stay. I can work it and make it pay. I know I can. God damn you and your cop! Take it easy, Orin. You're just making this harder on everyone. Think of your family. Orin, this family's not worth it. It's worth double. people because they don't do nothing but make me hurt. That's a very sad story. But that's why I'm here, to stop this kind of thing from happening, to help you. 
Can you get the farmers their farms back? Can you make the wind stop blowing? Can you make it rain? Of course not. The government can't do everything. Can the government do anything? I guess poor people need money as much as anyone, don't they? They could have used some a couple years back. It ain't necessary now. The people in the pen all have a negative attitude. <laughs> Don't set your mind by me. Go ask someone else. I would, but I haven't seen anybody else. Now you're catching on. <laughs> Where is everybody? They're all gone.